Hey there, ghosts and ghouls. Warlock Boo here. Today, I had to change the schedule. I know I promised appetite for murder, but that's going to be put on hold because I am working on a collaboration with someone with that one to do a voice of a character that I just couldn't voice. So I'm skipping ahead to my next one in the Nightside series, Lucy at Christmas Time. And it's a great one to kick off this Christmas season. Because when this comes out, it should be December 1st, or about to be December, but it's still a great one to kick off the Christmas time. And stay tuned for after this, because I do have an announcement on something special coming out on Christmas, and I think you guys will be excited for it. But this is Lucy at Christmas Time by Simon R. Green from the Nighttime series. Enjoy! <laughs> You never forget your first, and mine was Lucy. It was Christmas Eve in the night side, and I was drinking Wormwood Brandy and Strange Fellows, the oldest bar in the world. The place was crowded. The air was thick with good cheer, and ceiling trailed long streamers of the cheapest paper decorations money could buy. And as midnight approached, the revelers grew so festive they could barely stand up. Even so, everyone was careful to give me plenty of room as I sat on my stool at the bar nursing my drink. I'm Leo Moran, and that name you can scare people with. Of course, my Lucy was never scared of me, even though everyone told her I was a bad boy and I would come to ba a bad end. Lucy sat on the stool beside me at the bar, smiling and listening while I talked. She doesn't have a drink, she never does. The music system was playing Jingle Bells by the Sex Pistols, a sure sign the bar owner was feeling nostalgic. Further down the long and only occasionally polished wooden bar was Tommy Oblivion, the existential private eye. He was currently doing his, the, his best to convince a pressing cr creditor that his bill might or might not be valid in this particular reality, not that far away. Miss Fate, the Nightside's very own leather costumes transvestite superhero, was dancing on the tabletop with Demon Girl reporter Betty Devine. Betty's cute little curved horns peeped out from between her bangs of long, long dark hair. The Prince of Darkness was soaking in his drink over the cancellation of his TV reality show. The Mistress of the Dark was trying to tempt St. Nicholas with sprigs of plastic mistletoe and a reindeer with a very red nose was lying slumped and extremely drunk in the corner, muttering something about unionization. Brightly glowing, wee-winged fairies swept around and around the huge Christmas tree, darting in and out of the heavily branches and fantically speeds in some endless game of tag. Every now and again, one of the fairies would detonate like a flashbulb from sheer overpowering joy de vere before reforming and rejoining the chase. <clears throat> Just another Christmas Eve in the oldest bar in the world, where dreams come true if you're not careful. Especially at this one time of year, when gods and monsters, good men and bad, can come together in the grand old tradition of eating and drinking yourself stupid, making a fool of yourself over past lovers. <clears throat> Alex the bartender noticed my glass was empty and filled it up again without having to be asked. Since he knew me really well, he usually has a good sense to insist I pay in advance for every drink, but even nasty, mean-spirited Alex Morrissey knows better than to disturb me on Christmas Eve. I saluted Lucy with my new drink, and she smiled prettily back at me. My lovely Lucy, short and sweet, pleasantly curved, tight blonde curls over heart-shaped face, bright flashing eyes, and a smile to break your heart. Wearing the same long white dress she'd been wearing just before she left me forever. Lucy was sharp as a tack, sweet as forbidden fruit, and honest as the day is long. <clears throat> what she ever saw in me, I'll never know. She was 16, going on 17. Of course, I'm a lot older than her now. I only ever see her on Christmas Eve. I don't have to come here tell myself every year that I want, but I always do. Because no matter how much it hurts, I have to see her. Silly boy, she always says, I forgave you long ago. And I always nod and say, I don't forgive me, and I never will. We were in love, really, 
we were very young and everything seems so sharp and intense when your young young emotions surge through you like tidal waves and a sudden smile from a girl can explode in your heart like a firecracker and mints in the moment transfix in each other's eyes like rabid thoughts in a glare of approaching headlights yes she was my first love and i've never forgotten the time we had together all the things we were going to do all the people we could have been thrown away in a moment of madness i reminded lucy of how we first met standing in a railway station late at night waiting for the train that seemed like it would never come i looked at her she looked at me and we both smiled the next thing i knew we were chatting away as though we'd known each other all our lives after that we were never apart laughing and teasing arguing and making up walking hand in hand and arm in arm because we couldn't bear not to be touching each other running through the thick woods under dark hair drinking and singing in the late night lockup even though we were still underage because the owners was the old romantic who believed in young love and later slow danced together on the cobbled streets of the back alleys to the sound of some sentimental music drifting out of a half open window up above never forget your first love your first great passion i was jolted out of the mood as harry fabulous launched out of the crowd to greet me with his best salesman style he should have known better but harry could never try resist to try and sell a silic silencer to the man who was about to shoot him always affable and professionally charming harry was a con man a fixer a specialist in his kind of deal and leaves you continue, counting your fingers afterwards <clears throat> always ready to sell you something that's bad for you or someone else hard man to dislike but worth the effort he went to sit on the stool next to me and then froze as i fixed him with my stare i smiled at him showing my teeth and he went pale he eased back from the stool holding his empty hands out before me to show him how sorry and harmless he was i let him go my time with lucy was so precious to interrupt with the likes of harry fabulous i remembered running through the woods chasing lucy in and out of the tall dark trees as she ran giggling before me teasing and taunting me always just out of reach but careful never to get too far ahead i might think she doesn't want to be caught it was late at night but the woods were lit up with the shimmering blue white glare of a full moon the whole world seemed to come alive around me as i ran rich with scent and sound i'd never noticed before i felt strong and fast and indomitable like i could run and run forever lucy ran ahead of me her long white dress like a ghost fleeting through the trees the moonlight filled my mind and boiled through my body my senses were too sharp so sharp now they were almost painful i'd never felt so alive so happy the change swept over me like a red boiling tides bones cracking and creak and so lengthened and i didn't care full burst out of me covered me made me whole my mouth stretched out into a long muscle so i could howl my thanks to the full moon that gave me birth I hardly even noticed as i fell forward and continued to run on four feet i was a wolf under the glorious moon doing what i was born to do ancient imperative of a hunt was upon me i fought a forgot about leo more forgot about lucy i was howling through the trees maddened by the moon an exhilaration of my very first change the real me had finally burst out of its human cocoon its human trap released to run and hunt as i was meant to i ran and ran driven on by the marvelous strength and speed of my new four legs and lord of all i surveyed and so the whole world everything in it was nothing more to me than prey i shot back and forth questing between the trees cresting the ridge and throwing myself down onto the prey cringing below i slammed it to the ground and tore at its throat with one easy snap of my jaws the blood was hot and wet and wonderful in my mouth the prey kicked and struggled as i tore it apart but not for long i feasted on the hot streaming meat savoring the weight tore easily between my fine new teeth i ate till i was full then raised my legs and urinated over what was left so no other beast could dare to touch my kill i lifted my blood flecked muzzle felt as i'd come home at last and i came to myself again lucy was gone and now all these years later it was christmas eve in strange fellows and the crowds were singing a carol of something like it the night was almost over i didn't tell lucy what i'd been thinking about but i think she knew she only ever looks sad when i do but it's all i can think about on the nights of all nights 
The nights that separated us forever. Christmas Eve, when the world seems full of promise. The night I told Lucy I loved her, that I'd love her forever and forever and a day. I told her that was nothing else in the world I wanted as much as her. I meant it. Then I was the wolf within that made me a liar. That's why I come here every Christmas Eve to the oldest bar in the world where sometimes stories can still end in lovers meeting. I don't have to show up, but I do because I promised her I'd love her forever and a day. The clock struck midnight. The revelers cheered the coming of Christmas Day and Lucy softly and silently faded away, gone again for another year. When the change first takes you, it's only too easy to mistake one's passion for another. You never forget your first victim. So, my ghoulies, what did you think of that? He sure released a beast within and made that a murderous relationship. <laughs> what a, seriously, what did you think of that? Uh, and you have a suggestion for a story for me to read later? Post it down below and I'll try and find it. Even if it's a short story in an actual book. A lot of them I am actually legally allowed to read. And I can actually at least try and get a hold of the author and read it if you guys really want me to. But uh, as I was saying earlier, I do have some big news. Around Christmas time, I am going to be releasing something I've been working on for a while. I am going to be releasing the first chapter of the Newman comic with audio. I, me and some other people. I will show you uh, more about them when the comic comes out, Are have worked together to create a nice audio comic. I don't know what they're actually called. I'm just calling it an audio comic for now. And I'm hoping you all enjoy it. It is greatly done. The talents I got are great, and it should all come together perfectly. I can do this right. I have been working on this and scrapping and working and scrapping it over and over again to try and get it right. But, uh, Yes, uh, if, tell me if you really want to see this, and tell me what you think below, and you should subscribe. I do these every Tuesday, with Monday and Thursday being review days to review video games or animations or webcomics, things like that. And if you have a suggestion, link it below. But until then, this has been Warlock Boo, hoping to be spoken y'all later. Bye. <laughs>